the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. <clears throat> Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And I thought we could talk about a few different things that might change. Have you ever been in a conflicted situation? Maybe have you seen people be kind of like bullies at school before or anything like that? Yeah? That's not good, eh? Maybe that's something that we could see change. Could we write on here maybe no fighting? Something like that? No fighting or peace, maybe? That would also mean that when there's people in another country that are fighting and using guns, even, that we would ask that they not do that too, right? That we ask for that to change. What about sharing? Do we do enough of that around? Do you think we do enough? I wonder if we could even do more, even ask people to share more. If you've got something that's valuable to somebody else, and they've got something that's valuable to you, maybe we could do a little bit of sharing around more like that. Is that a good one? <clears throat> so, sharing. What about the environment <coughs> around us? Sometimes, if you're driving down the road, and you see a car, what's coming out the back of the car? Smoke. That's kind of gross, eh? So maybe we could ask for clean, clean air, and maybe water as well while we're at it. Is that a good one? And sometimes I wonder, and I, I've done a little bit of work with people <coughs> who um, are termed, as I saw it in an article, no fixed address. They're people that don't have homes. And sometimes they may not feel so important. I wonder if what we could be asking the church and people around us to help those people feel important. Does that make sense? That'd be kind of a good one to, maybe we could put um, that everybody is important. Is that good? And uh, let's, let's get five here. So we've got four. Um, what about um, letting everybody know that God loves the world? How's that? Because I wonder if somebody, sometimes we forget that. We may live as though God loves only me, or maybe that God isn't even there. But if we remind people that we're all together and joined by God and God's love for us, that could be pretty big, I think, for people. What do you think? Is that a good one? Look at that one too. God loves the world. Now, okay, now I need your help with this piece, because sometimes we can say these things, but people don't always hear them, and so it's good to put them up somewhere where people can hear them. And Luther, as you can see here, took a hammer. And I was thinking maybe we could take a hammer, but then I thought, maybe not. <laughs> um, and, uh, but then I thought, well, how do we put up announcements around here? And if you've been in a fellowship room, in our other space there where we have cookies and cake, so maybe you've seen it, there's a big board there with papers all over it. And we use thumbtacks and so on. And that's how we kind of get word out sometimes. Would you give me a hand maybe putting this up on a, on a board where everybody can see it? Or where they can look at it and go, you guys can work at something. Stand up, sure. Do you want to stand on a chair? Can I lift you up? Can you get up there? Here. You take that. Can I lift you up? One, two, three. Take that taco. Put that up. Please go check it. Good stuff. Can you stop? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kiddo.
going to um, read a little bit from this book, which I think some of you have read. It's called The End of Christendom and the Future of Christianity by Douglas John Hall. And, um, and this is what he writes in, in the beginning. The title of this book is intended to suggest the overall hypothesis that I want to develop in it. Briefly put, it is my belief that the Christian movement can have a very significant future, a responsible future that will both be both faithful to the original vision of this movement and of immense service for our beleaguered world. But to have that future, we Christians must stop trying to have the kind of future that nearly 16 centuries of official Christianity in the Western world have conditioned us to covet. That coveted future is what I mean when I use the term Christendom, which means literally the dominion or sovereignty of the Christian religion. Today, Christendom, so understood, is in its death throes, and the question we all have to ask ourselves is whether we can get over regarding this as a catastrophe and begin to experience it as a doorway, albeit a narrow one, into a future that is more in keeping with what our Lord first had in mind when he called disciples to accompany him on his mission to redeem the world through love, not power. Now I want to suggest that we engage in the reforming of the church that is going on around us. It is being reformed from the outside, less people come, people do not talk about church community as an integral part of life. Church is criticized for being a place that is irrelevant and offering praise to a deity as a kind of superstition. We've all experienced that in some way or another, if not in conversation with somebody, just noticing that we're small. So change is happening. We, here in this place, know this because we aren't big. And if we were huge, raking in the box in the offering plate, and able to maintain a big, visible building, we wouldn't have a lot to talk about. But we are at the brink of extinction, and we need to be intentional about how we're engaging in the transformations that are happening around us. <coughs> Yeah. And incidentally, we are not the only group suffering in this way. There are other churches as well, but not even just churches. As you heard, even what Melissa was saying in the announcements around the food bank needing regular donors, I mean, there's those kinds of institutions that are hurting as well. Um, small business feel a pinch. Educational institutions are having to be creative in their recruitment. And groups that appear successful are needing to constantly reinvent themselves and sink marketing dollars into image so that people keep coming back. We must be living what we say we believe. If, we, if what we say we believe has no relevance beyond Sunday, then why gather? And that is perhaps why the church is waning these days, and perhaps why it is going to die out in a few decades, maybe only a few years. Church as we know it, that is. And I want to ask you to ponder why church? And then, what might we do about it? Just think about it. Then maybe hang on to the thoughts. We can talk more about it over coffee in a few minutes. In many ways, Luther's desire for debate in the church was primarily to ask why. Why do we do what we do? What is the relevance of it? And if it has no relevance, why do it? Or if we might do something that it has more meaning, why not incorporate that into our life together? That is largely what Reformation living is about. And we're called to reflect on that all the time.